Hi there and welcome to the shop. This is Andrew with craftybeetroot.com and today I want to introduce a new segment that I'm going to put up on my channel called Can It Be Fixed? Today we're going to be starting with this clock. My wife and I inherited this from her grandfather who passed away a few years ago and we just picked it up recently and there's a few little issues with it. To start this series I wanted to start with something a little simpler and after watching way too many hours of Click Spring, if you haven't checked that channel out, go check it out. Gorgeous videos, gorgeous clock making, um, couldn't recommend it anymore. However, because I don't have the tools, and I don't have the setup, and I don't have the skills, I wanted to start with something a little bit basic, and so I wanted to get this clock fixed up. As far as I can tell, there's not too much wrong with the clock, and it should be a fairly easy fix. There's three main aspects to the clock that I kind of want to clean up and fix. One is this brass around the edge here. This is all pretty tarnished up. You need to hit that with some brasso and some cloths and we'll clean that up. And the woodwork is just a little bit aged. Um, there's just some bubbling underneath the lacquer or varnish or however it was originally treated. I need to be really, really gentle with this. It's a very thin veneer on this plywood. So I don't want to do any damage to the underlying wood. I just kind of want to take that top layer off and just give it a nice coat of varnish and for that I'm probably just going to be using some nice fine sandpaper. And then the final thing that we need to do and the actual main project here is to get it working again. When we picked the clock up it wasn't working and we were trying to find all the pieces. Uh, most of the pendulum assembly was in pieces and after carefully looking at the mechanism and how it might work I deduced that the tension spring was actually broken and this is a wear point on these kind of clocks and the pendulum swings on this spring and that spring eventually wears out. I got a couple springs from uh, the US sent over and so we're going to try them out. They're only about $3, $4 each, obviously more for shipping, but we're going to go ahead and get that working. So with that, let's go ahead and start taping up the glass. So where I'm going to start is actually with this hinge. Because I can actually pull that off. Alrighty, now that I have the glass piece off, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. And then I'm going to put some painter's tape over it to keep it nice and safe while we clean up the brass. We can see on the bottom here how shiny it is compared to the top, which is a really good sign. It means that this should polish up really, really nice. Well, actually, I just noticed something and that there's a little screw right there. And what I think I can do is actually undo that and pop out the glass. And there we go. We want to be really careful with that. But now we can polish that up with no issues. So I'm just going to start with some steel wool just to take some of the edge off of this. Now that we've got that cleaned up, it's time to start doing the brasso. Um, I didn't really need to do too much on that. It actually came up really good, which is always a good thing. So we're just going to dry it and then we'll go ahead and get the brasso out. And you can see the difference that it's already starting to make. So we've got that mostly cleaned up now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to now start working on the, the actual woodwork itself. So I'm going to put away everything else. We're just going to tape up this edge here. So now that we've got that taped up, we're going to go very lightly on the um, sandpaper with the goal of cleaning up some of this water damage here. So I'm just sanding here with some sandpaper 220 grit. I just want to make sure I can try and clean this up as best I can. 
uh, mover I can get the initial surface. When I come to putting the varnish on, it'll make it a lot easier. So just making sure I hit all the different areas and I remove all of that original varnish. Just making sure it's a nice, clean, smooth surface. Before I add any of the varnish, I'm gonna just clean it all off with some mineral turpentine. Good way to get rid of the dust and it dries really quickly. And this is a really nice way to just kind of prep it and to see what the surface is, see what the surface is going to look like. It's time to put on the varnish. You can see I'm applying a nice thick layer with the idea being that you'll be able to remove those brush strokes as it naturally settles. Obviously, the, if you apply it too thick, you have some issues with drips. And so you want to get a nice balance between not having any issues with drips as also not leaving brush strokes. So now that the first layer is dry, what I'm going to do is just slightly go over with some more sandpaper. Pay very special attention to any kind of drips or paint stroke marks. Basically anywhere that's not perfect. Now we've got that done, we're gonna let that sit and have a really good dry. Didn't quite leave it dry enough and when I started sanding it, it started peeling in spots. So I'm gonna to have to do some work to clean that up. But you get the idea. So we've got a few layers of varnish on the cock now. Between each varnish, we've been going in with some sandpaper. So now I'm just using some 600 grit. I'm just going in and making sure we've cleaned up now that I have all the brass cleaned up the glass cleaned up the outside is all pretty well finished I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it all back together I'm gonna to take all the tape off Okay. I'm just adding the screw back in. Okay, so the final part of this process is to, is to get this old mechanism working. For that, we're going to need a couple things. So, first things first is the original mechanism. So I got two just in case, but basically what we need to do is find one that replaces, and I think we'll try this one here first. We're going to start with this one here, and we're going to try and put this in. So we're going to need our tapered pin. So what we're going to do, is we're going to place this in here, like that, and then add the tapered pin. That in so now we need to put the next part of the pendulum on there and so this will go into this little area here and it will spin around what we might do is we might just pull the tapered pin out do that first
All right, there we go. Now all we need to do is add the pendulum. And... And there we have it. Can it be fixed? Yeah, we got it. Um, this is my first time tinkering in the back of a clock, so I apologize for anybody out there watching that actually knows what they're doing, and I hope I didn't miss anything. If I did, feel free to mention it in the comments below. I really want to look after this clock as kind of my first project for a mechanical clock. I mean, the nice thing was that it was all basic wood building techniques. Um, had some issues with leaving brush marks, but we kind of figured that out in the end. It was some just basic brass, so I didn't have to worry about expensive gold plating or anything like that. Bit of glass, everything kind of came apart relatively easy. And in the end, it was a simple fix. That little tension spring, that cost about $3. Um, I had to pay a lot more for shipping to get it over here, and I did get a set of two for just in case. Now it's just trying to figure out the chime mechanisms and then I just need to dial in the pendulum to make sure that it's keeping time accurately because it did get fiddled with while I was building it. But all in all, I'm super happy with how it turned out. It looks great. Hopefully it keeps time. Um, and now it's time to let it loose in the house. So thank you for watching my tinkering. If you're interested in more builds like this, go ahead and subscribe or check out my website, www.craftybeetroot.com. Thank you.